if you extinguish the independence of the judiciary, you would undermine the rights of individuals in Israel. And that is no way of moving us towards a peaceful resolution. Rishi Sunak is uh, meeting uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, today. They've already done the handshake on the steps of number 10. But you could clearly hear loud shouts of shame in Hebrew from people protesting against uh, Netanyahu's domestic policies. His proposed changes to the judicial system would give his government greater control in appointing judges and overruling the country's Supreme Court. If the judicial reform is passed, politicians have unprecedented power in a country with no formal constitution or second legislative chamber that can perform other de democratic checks and balances. There have been lots of protests in the country over the changes. Uh, the Labour, uh, Labour MP, Dame Margaret Hodge, who's been active in protesting against the current Israeli government, uh, she's been, uh, here, fact, here is a clip of her speaking at a recent rally in London. And we stand here today because to remain silent on what is happening in Israel would be to betray and desert all the Israelis and all the Jews around the world for whom Israel and its continued existence as a democratic nation is so important. <laughs> Well, we can speak to uh, Dame Margaret Hodge now. Morning, Margaret. Morning to you, Matt. Sound funny when you when you uh, play that back to me. When you, when you hear this about yourself, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Explain what is happening in Israel and why the British Jewish community ha is so concerned about what's happening. Well, Israel has always prided itself, and all of us who support and care about Israel think this is really important. They've prided itself on being a democracy. And one of the features of a democracy is that you have an independent judiciary. And that's particularly important in Israel because Israel hasn't got a second chamber that can act as a check and a balance on the power of the executive. And it hasn't got a written constitution that can also protect individual rights. So the proposals that Netanyahu is putting forward I think, and many Jews, both in Israel, outside Israel, and many other people who care about Israel feel the same. These proposals would undermine the independence of the judiciary. He's proposing two things. He's proposing, firstly, that the appointment of judges should be uh, determined by the politicians, so it would be political appointment of judges. And the second thing he's, uh, he's proposing is a new clause uh, which would uh, mean that if the Supreme Court came to a particular judgment, a simple majority in the Knesset could overturn that judgment of the Supreme Court. So the political appointment of the judiciary and overturning judgments by the Supreme Court would totally under undermine the independence of the judiciary. What can Britain do about it? What could Rishi Sunak do about it today as he meets Benjamin Netanyahu? Well, I, I think it, it's been a really contentious issue. There have been massive protests in Israel. Um, many Israelis who uh, think about it, I will just read to you, Matt, because it's worth it, uh, what what Israel said when, when it was declared, the, in, uh, the, the background to the Declaration of Independence. It was a country based on freedom, justice and peace that will ensure complete equality of social and political rights to all its inhabitants. And all of us who care about Israel, who want Israel to succeed, who see it as a homeland and a, uh, for, for Jews, the only homeland in the world for Jews, um, uh, think that we should protect democracy. What Rishi can do and what the British pe uh, uh, government can do in the same way actually that the Americans have done is express his concern of these proposals that are being put forward. And I think if there is po uh, political diplomatic pressure on Netanyahu, I think that could have an impact. Put that together with a feeling, the way in which Israel itself is divided on this, with the feeling of many, many Jews in the diaspora who are firm Zionists and, 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 and uh, uh, supporters of Israel. And I think that that diplomatic pressure, that public pressure, that political pressure could make Netanyahu think again. That's what we want him to do. 
uh, we want him to get on with the job of actually uniting Israel, not dividing it. The um, Conservative MP, Elisa Kearns, who chairs the Foreign Affairs Committee, said there was an ill-timed meeting. But it sounds to me like you think it's a good idea that's going ahead. Well, um, the meeting is happening, so it's not my... <laughs> so I would use that meeting. I'm not one of those who think you should just sort of boycott him completely. I think you've got to engage and talk to people, and that's the way that you achieve change. But I would use this, given that it's happening, I would use it as an opportunity to express deep concern uh, at what is, happen what is happening in Israel. If you, if you extinguish... Uh, the uh, independence of the judiciary, you would undermine the rights of individuals in Israel. And that's the rights both of Jewish Israelis, Arab Israelis too. And that is no way of moving us towards a peaceful resolution of the conflicts that have uh, dominated the Middle East for so long.